Hi there, my name is Meredith White. I teach Spanish one and two just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I wanted to make a brief and hopefully informative uh, screencast of how I use Google Calendar. This has been coming up in recent sessions at different conferences and presentations and district trainings. Um, and unfortunately, in that setting, I don't always have a lot of time to go into how and, and the logistics and all that kind of thing. So I wanted to take some time and do so because I use Google Calendar for just about everything uh, in terms of archiving files uh, that are available to students and parents, as well as colleagues and and other sharing all over the place. Um, and I also use it as a planning tool for this year as well as for next year compared to last year and so on. And so I just kind of wanted to dive right in. This is my November view. Now I say Google Calendar, you can see over in the corner here that I have a school issue in the top right hand corner, I have a school issued Gmail account. You don't need to have that, but I happen to. We have our school given email accounts and we also have school district issued gmail accounts so we also have google classroom but i'm not going to go into google classroom i don't use it enough to um, be able to give you any tips on it i think it's pretty cool but we just we have a, a variety of platforms that we can use and so i'm just focusing on the calendar right now um, and again i use the calendar to archive files to show dates just as a communication tool and it really cuts down um, on things that have wasted my time in the past, which is figuring out, okay, let me look back at my planners from last year and sync up the dates and how long did we take for unit four and that kind of a thing. Uh, it's cut down on some of that wasted time. Not that that's wasted time, but the wasted time within that, finding that, finding the planner, tracking down the dates, figuring out why I'm missing three days in the middle of unit two and that kind of thing. Oh, that's right, you know, SAT testing and blah, blah, blah. So that can be kind of tricky. With the calendar, it's just all in one place. And whenever I updated it last in real time for myself is the way it stays until I change it. So next year I can see, oh, that's right. The second week of, well, for example, like you can see on the screen, the third week of unit five is Thanksgiving. So we didn't actually spend four weeks on unit five. We're only spending three full weeks, but one of those weeks is Thanksgiving. So as opposed to looking at the dates later next year and going, oh my gosh, why were we in unit five so long? Well, we weren't, um, but it's easy to forget some of those breaks and some of those holidays, as well as how often we gave uh, assessments or how we scheduled the assessments, right? Like testing season comes up and it's like, why did we do that before that? I don't remember either. And unless you're a really good note taker and very organized in those ways, which I am sometimes and then sometimes I'm not, um, you need systems in place to kind of save you from yourself, which is my case. So I use Google Calendar to plan but also to make that planning transparent to students and parents and, um, and colleagues. So what you see right here is my November view. You're gonna see that everything is color coded. Uh, students and parents, like the public version of that calendar is not necessarily color coded, but also that's for me. Um, the, the color of the unit is also the color of the paper that that unit is on. So I color code my students' um, paper materials. That way at the end of the unit, we can say study anything yellow. And um, obviously there are more things available on other resources from previous units, but in, in the grand scheme of things, we know that. But sort of in a micro view, it's like study anything yellow um, or your objectives for this unit should be on anything yellow or purple. Or if I go back, you'll see a little of that kind of, kind of rose color and then blue. And so those are all the different colors of paper we have. So um, currently you'll see that we are here on unit five. Now, if you click on unit five, and I'm just gonna do a soft little click right there directly where it says unit five shopping, you'll see that I can also add attachments. This is a new-ish feature, a couple years old, um, or maybe a few years, I don't know. I feel like I, I say things like the other day and it was like 2015. So maybe it's been longer than a couple years, maybe a few years, but you can add attachments to your calendar entries. So I can just call that whole length of time, unit five, and then attach things accordingly, either all at once or as we go through it. So they've got access to the vocabulary, just the, the targeted structures and vocabulary for that unit, um, study guide for the test. It's all out there. We don't, I give them the study guide at the end of the unit, just give them two at the beginning and it can kind of gauge their studying. And I find that what we do in class is typically more difficult than what's actually on the assessment for good reason. Um, and so they have access to that right away. They've also got week one, week two, and week three, which means those are the slides in PDF form that we have seen all throughout class in those weeks. 
So what I had as Google Slides, maybe week two, week one, week two, week three, I then just exported file and then download as, as a PDF. I also try to make sure that any resources, unless one slips by, which I hope it has not, I go through and I triple, quadruple check, but any resources that have been purchased are labeled as such. That way, because my calendar's public, um, people can't take resources that have a copyright and that belong to somebody that I bought, but they didn't therefore have to buy. So that's just being fair to the vendors, um, who we owe a lot to. Uh, when you buy resources, it's so nice to find stuff that works and is awesome and is well thought out. And so I, I appreciate those people. So I have to be really careful when sharing resources so publicly. So you've got week one, week two, week three, study guide straight from the beginning and so on. So when they click there, we'll click unit one or unit five, week one, and they've got every warm up we've seen, every picture we've seen, anything we've used in class, pretty much everything. Uh, with things labeled as purchased and so on. Sometimes I just take those out. So if it seems a little like jiggy joggy, it's because I've just like deleted entire sections. Um, but anyway, little bits and pieces of this and that and different warm ups. And then that's everything we've done in class, basically. Um, obviously, one can vary from that schedule, but those are the those are the slides uploaded at the end of the week. Week three, though, is this week, and they're actually uploaded ahead of time. So that's what we're going to do this week. Um, or should I say next week, the week after Thanksgiving. So we're going to look a lot like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Unit 5 for us is like shopping, clothing, community, and so on. We've got a little Senor Wooly, a little grammar, um, some puzzles, some videos, and then also some assessment prep as well as some tongue twisters and hopefully some intercultural discussions as well as comparisons. So that's all just attached to the calendar, and it goes like that for every single unit. There's unit four, um, and the week three is a little shortened because we had testing. There's unit three, so they can go back and look. I mean, their whole folder, they could lose on the bus or it gets rained on or whatever happens to students, which we know happens all the time, and everything is there. If there are extra credit opportunities, there you go. There are some different like Ed Puzzle links, Senora Woolly, um, Gim Kit, which is great. So it's just also a place to keep all the things that I use on a regular basis. Um, week one, or excuse me, unit one, weeks one, two, and three, as well as like different stories we use. Um, anything can be uploaded there for, uh, for their use or for parent accessibility as well. So it's all there for whoever wants it. Um, and so I really like that. And just the way you do that is say I was going to make today, um, into a calendar date. So let's say on today's date, November 23rd, we want to make uh, an appointment. We want to say, okay, here's, you know, today's Spanish one agenda, or you wanted to make it, you know, say, say we want to start, um, unit five, let's just make up a number, unit five next Monday. So I'm just lightly clicking on the day. I'm going to say unit five, let's call it test, test. And then here is where you make the dates. So you know it's gonna start Monday. And then let's say it's just a quick, it's just a week long unit. And there I go. So I have the 26th, the 30th, and I just wanna hit save. Now from there, once I click on it and click the pencil to edit, there's where I can add attachments. So I can look at recent things in Google Drive. These are all my like weekly templates. Um, I've been doing a lot of planning. A lot of weekly templates, a lot of presentation resources, etc. But you can go just to upload your own files. You can go to your own Google Drive and from there, knock yourself out. You can add anything. Um, once you add something, you have to double check though. Let's add week three. Actually, let's add something that hasn't been added recently. Let's add week three from Spanish to April. Once you go, once you, once you add it, it'll stay right here. And then you want to click on the file name, click on the stoplight here. It's not a waffle, but it's a little partial waffle. It's a little stoplight. Click there and then click share because if you keep it as like a restricted file, it's visible to you, which is great, but it's not visible to anyone else. So you want to make sure that once you click on, let me go back, I did that kind of fast. Click on the stoplight, click on share, and then I click on advanced in the lower right hand corner. And I want to make sure that it's on public on the web. So I'll hit save, I'll hit done, and there you go. Um, and everything's saved there. And then in the calendar, once you hit save, there it is. So there's our unit um, five, and it's ready to rock and roll. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this little trash can. 
but I've also got presentation resources saved. So anything I did at Actful, anything I presented on, is here for um, attendees and non-attendees alike. Anything on social media, anything I've done recently with different districts, 